Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to the Legend of Heroes Trails of the Third. Today, I'm at Star Door number 7, and I made sure that everyone has a Mirage Ring or a Mirage Ring Plus equipped, just to prevent the Petrify status. It is imperative. You're also going to want one caster who can cast some sort of all-hitting spell. The easiest all-hitting spell is to grab Titanic Roar, which you can make with eight Earth Quartz and four uh, Space Quartz. It's pretty easy. I gave it to Shara, and I also gave her, uh, what is it, the Crimson Eye to raise her Magic Attack power plus 300 points. So with all those little preparations being done, let's go ahead and get started here at Star Door number 7. I've also gone ahead and I've thrown Richard and Renee into my party because, you know, we just haven't seen them fight, so we might as well. I mean, we've pretty much seen everybody else fight. Actually, I'm kind of pretty sure we've seen everybody else fight. If I'm missing somebody, let me know, but I'm almost 100% positive we've seen everybody. And even if so, we will eventually, because you have to use everybody eventually anyway. So, what's going on here? Whoa! What's this? Yikes! Oh. Okay. Can do! Whoa, lots of guys here. So let's see what we got going on here. The Star Guardian, 13,000 HP, and apparently he goes crazy whenever his uh, HP gets low. And then these guys, they petrify you with every single hit that they do. They are ridiculous. And they're really hard to hit, and they can multiply themselves. They're total bitches, and I hate them. So first things first, use Kevin's S-Craft. Much any all hitting S craft will do, but I like to use Kevin's, you know, because he's in your party anyway. So, Richard, we haven't really seen him all that much, but notice where his turn order is right now. And then, if we start using crafts, he was actually going to go. Oh, it doesn't really show, it's not really showing it, but ba basically, he has a very short delay for any of his crafts. So, it's actually a really good idea to use as many of his crafts as humanly possible because it's actually quicker for him to use a craft than it is to, like, just attack. It's kind of crazy. And he's, like, ridiculously powerful. Look at that! He's so good. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess we could use, I don't know, Calamity Throw. Whatever. Can we, like, hit some enemies with it? Hey, we can. Okay. Nice! Uh, hey, we got rid of the boss. And now, with her, what I could do is use a Heaven's Kiss and just have everybody kind of go again. But I really, really, really want her to get rid of all these little guys here. So I'm going to have her Titanic Roar. So then after they're done doing their little bullshit attacks against us and us resisting all of their uh, petrifying, we can just kill them outright. It makes it so much easier, so much nicer. Yeah, you can see that they're splitting and dividing. It's like those slimes in Secret of Mana. Total pains in the ass is these guys right here. And if you didn't have Petrify Resist, basically what Petrify does is it turns you to stone, which doesn't exactly kill you, but the very next attack is going to deal max damage to you no matter what. So that kind of sucks. Uh, let's look at these guys' HP. Since some of them split, some of them have more HP than others. So yeah, we'll go ahead and try to go after them. Oh, wow, got rid of him. Hey, see this Titanic War? Please just kill them all. That would just make my life so much easier. Oh, well, most of them. Just, you know, not the ones that split, so that kind of sucks. But, hey, hey, not too bad. So, yeah, these guys have a lot of evasion, and you're not really seeing that right now, but I'm just going to use regular attacks, and maybe you'll get to see um, some of the evasion that I'm talking about here, because it can be pretty ridiculous. Oh, wow. They didn't dodge anything. Yeah. Easy for me. I approve. Ooh, ooh, ninja garb. Hey, I'll have to check that out too. Huh. Okay. Wonder what we got this time.
Is that an orbment? What is this? Orbments and tanks and lights and airships? Oh, yeah, the orbital revolution that happened 50 years ago. Oh, yeah. It's essentially the industrial revolution, you know, as far as, you know, taking something that happened in, you know, the Legend Hero series and equating it to a real-life Earth thing. Yeah, kind of like electricity. Huh. Okay. Oh, the Epstein Foundation. We heard about that back in, uh, Cold Steel. Oh. Huh. Oh, over in Le Mans. Uh, we haven't been there yet. Oh, yeah, kind of like how the Industrial Revolution started in England for about 50 years until it finally spread to the rest of Europe. Oh, well, who are they? Huh. Professor Smith, we've heard about him. He was also in Cold Steel. He was one of the professors who created the Orable Staff for Emma and Elliot, and he also created the Panzer Soldats, too. So, kind of nice to uh, see more about him. Oh. Well, yeah, kind of, sort of. Oh! Oh, well, that's kind of nice, yeah. Good idea there. Okay. Professor Russell, that's Tita's grandfather, the father of the Orbital Revolution. Wow. Yeah. Huh. You know, for him being such a genius, it's kind of crazy how his daughter, like, hates him. Because, you know, she wouldn't be anything. She would have nothing if it wasn't for him and his genius. Edgar. Really? <laughs> Reminds me of uh, something from Final Fantasy. Yeah. Red like wildfire. They really like that term in JRPGs, don't they? I believe the first time I ever saw it in a JRPG was in Dragon Warrior 4, back when I was like in... God, when did that come out? Like 1990? 1991? I was probably in 5th grade? I guess. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you guys have horrible technology and nowhere else in the planet has it, so... Of course you guys have become, you know, more financially secure and more... Um, technologically viable as far as, you know, war is concerned and just, you know, propping up your own country and everything. Oh, yeah. Man, what I would give to be able to read this magazine! It looks so amazing! But, unfortunately, we can't actually read it. Okay. Yeah, you know, this it reminds me a lot of, like, how the Industrial Revolution happened in Europe, and then, you know, the, ex the Age of Exploration, and then the colonization, the conquering of basically the rest of the entire world, because of the power of, you know, the, the Industrial Revolution, everything that they had, you know? So it's the same similar sort of thing going on here, except that Liberal didn't actually go out and conquer anybody, they just kind of used it to better their people's lives. Too bad we didn't do that, too, in Earth, but, eh, you know, you learn from your mistakes. It is what it is. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, well, I would imagine so. Oh, well, that's good. Hopefully it's government-funded. I wonder if we're supposed to believe that what we're reading right now is actually part of this magazine, but I don't think it is. I mean, they have graphs and charts and captions and all sorts of other stuff, little articles, and this is just kind of, I don't know, factual information here. I'd rather read the magazine, like, seriously. <laughs> huh. Really? Huh. Just the Sunday school classes, not, like, the regular school classes? 
Oh, world peace. Yeah, um, you do have Erebonia right on your doorstep. That would be rather difficult. And, you know, they're just talking about Zemuria. Are there any other continents? On the, I mean, I would imagine there's got to be other continents than just Zemuria. I mean, there must be. We haven't heard about any of them, but I would imagine there would have to be. Oh. Huh. So they only made the tactical orbits over in Lamont State. Who knew? Kind of strange. Oh, the Orbital Network Project. Oh, huh. It's like the telephone line and everything, yeah. That's kind of nice. Oh. It's like that uh, line that they put across the Atlantic Ocean way back in, I think it was the early 1900s, maybe the late 1800s, they laid a line between, I want to say New York City and London, um, on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean to kind of, you know, connect Europe and North America together as far as, you know, through a telephone line, or maybe it was through like a telegraph line at the time. I'm not really entirely sure. I'd have to go back and, you know, read up on it, but who knows? Um, yeah, you know, you want world peace, and then horrible weaponry comes up, and then it just becomes an arms race. It's horrible. Oh, yeah, you know, you the more you know about your neighbor, the more commonalities you can, you know, find, and know, the more you realize, hey, we're not so different after all, and we can find some common ground, you know, we can get along. So I can understand how communication could be used as a means of world peace. Oh, well, yeah, it's rather hard. There's going to be some crazy people out there who don't want the world peace, but yeah. Well, anyway, pretty quick door. So with that, we finished that up. Ooh, got ingenuity, too. Let's check that out. Why not? And we got that ninja garb, too. Can't wait to see what that is. So let's look at that as well. Let's see. Ninja garb. Where is it? There it is. Eh, not too terrible. It raises your speed by five, so it's nothing horrible. I mean, it's better than the other stuff that I have. I have yet to buy armor this entire game. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Then we got Ingenuity 2. There it is. Oh. Not half bad. Not that I'm really using... Uh, magic all that much, but it could come in handy on, like, Chloe or Oliver or something. And yeah, I know this episode is short, but I pretty much want to keep a door per episode. So, next time on Let's Play The Legend Heroes Trails in the Sky the Third, we're going to move on to Star Door 6, where we need 20 recipes. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.